My name is Kate Wilde and we are filming from the Autism Treatment Center of America. I am a teacher here in the Sunrise program and very excited to share with you uh, a kind of a recipe, some ideas and thoughts so that you at home with your children can create pre-planned games to take into the playroom with your children. So what are some things that you would be really useful for you to think about as you create games for your children? Well, first and foremost, when do you introduce them to your child? When you're in the room, what are the signs from your child that you can look for so that you can know that, yes, I can introduce my game. How exciting. All right, so here in the Sunrise program, we have a very particular timing to when we believe children are available and ready to play games with you to interact. All right, so when to introduce a game would be when your child is either looking at you, um, talking to you, or showing you some kind of physical indication that they're ready. So. If your child is isoming away and they're not looking at you and they're not involved with you, that would be a time uh, when you don't introduce your game but when you join in their activity. But let's say they stop their ism and they stop their game and they're not doing another activity and they come over to you and they look at you or maybe they sit in your lap and give you a big hug or they lean on your shoulder and therefore indicating that they're interested in you and they're not involved in another activity, that's the perfect time to introduce your game to them. So here are some thoughts on how to put a game together for your child that's really specifically designed for your child because every single child on the autism uh, spectrum is so different and they're interested in so many different things that you want to create a game that's really motivating for your child. So the first ingredient to put into this game recipe is to put in the game itself your child's motivation so that they would be more inclined to want to play this amazing game. So how do you know what your child's motivation is? Hmm, interesting. Okay, so you want to become a detective and really watch your child because um, <clears throat> the things that are motivating your child are either what they show pleasure in, um, what they smile at, or it's something that they do a lot that they spend a lot of their time doing. So for instance, some motivations are going to be really easy for you to see. Um, if your child really likes it when you tickle them, they laugh and they smile and they show you again and again that they want you to tickle them, that is a motivation. Um, <clears throat> maybe they're showing you that they love it when you squeeze their feet and they keep giving you their feet or their hands again. Well, clearly, squeezing their feet or hands would be a great motivation. Maybe they like to jump on your back and da -da 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 and ride around the room with them and they love to be physically moved or spun around in circles with you. Well, then, physical ride games, that would be a motivation for them. Maybe you notice that your child might not like any of the things that I mentioned, but they love and spend so much time dropping things in front of their eyes. Maybe they pick up lots of little uh, pieces of paper that they rolled into little balls, and they pick it up and they watch it fall. Maybe they watch um, pencils fall down. So watching things fall would be a motivation that is really enjoyable for them. Maybe your child likes to carry around a fork or a wooden spoon or a belt or a stuffed animal. Well then, because they spend so much time with this object, then you can say that belts or wooden spoons are your child's motivation. Maybe your child loves to talk uh, and look at the, uh, the hoover or the vacuum if you're American. <laughs> and they love to talk about the washing machine or garbage trucks. Well, then washing machines would be your child's motivation. Or garbage trucks or vehicles would be your child's motivation. If your child likes to spin things or talk about the ABC or write a lot of the ABC or numbers, the ABC or numbers would be your child's motivation. So 
if you look at things your child likes to do a lot or things that they smile and laugh at, then these are clearly your child's motivation. So you can create a list of what your child really enjoys. The other thing you want to look at is your child will be motivated by certain things that you do. So let's say you notice that when you sing, la 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 la, you sing these lovely songs to them, that they they look at you more and they smile and they want you to do it again, then you singing is a motivation. Maybe um, when you make sound effects, <laughs> bing, 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 you, um, these kind of sound effects, <laughs> they laugh and they think it's funny. Well then, your sound effects are a motivation. Maybe you notice that when you do big movements and you put your arms in the air and you twirl around or you pretend to fall over and that you do things in a very silly slapstick kind of way or you pretend to run in slow motion. That's really motivating for your child. So there are things that you will do that are motivations for your child that you want to look for and put into your game. There are things that they will spend a lot of time even by themselves doing that would be a motivation. And there are things that they show you by laughing and giggling and wanting a lot. That is their motivation. Oh, one other thing. Characters can often be a motivation. So maybe your child likes Postman Pat. Maybe they like Superman. Maybe they like certain emblems on, um, you know, car emblems and things like that. That's also a motivation. All right, so when you're creating a game, you want to get motivations into your game. That's number one. Very important. So the second ingredient in your recipe of the most perfect um, specific game for your child would be to think about what, what do you want them to learn in this game? What is your child's current goal? And here we want to encourage you to um, put the specific learning that's from the Sunrise Program Developmental Model because we believe that the most effective thing to help your child grow and learn is their social interaction. So you want to think about, all right, so do I want to encourage my child to look at me more, to really enhance their eye contact? So maybe the goal is um, to start and continue an interaction. Um, maybe your child's goal is to listen, when uh, to look as they're listening to somebody talk. Maybe it's to talk when the, to look at somebody when they're talking. All right, so there are different eye contact goals. Which one are you going to work on in the game? It's very important to become really clear with that. Maybe it's a flexibility goal. So maybe you want to encourage your child to want to play other people's games or to physically or verbally participate in the game. That's a whole section also. Maybe you want to be clear on, okay, in this game, do I want to work on verbal communication? Do I want to help my child say one clear word? Or do I want to encourage my child to answer what and who and where questions? Also, is this game going to really help lengthening their attention span? or being able to play with um, different shared objects. So you want to be really clear, what is the goal you're working on? Um, so that's going to be really important, all right? So you've got your motivations, then you've got the specific goal. And with the Sunrise Program Attitude, you have all you need to create a game. It's as simple as that. So. Let's look at some different games so I can show you how you put those two together. And then a little bit later, we're going to talk about some a particular attitude and thoughts to adopt while you're actually doing these games in the playroom with your lovely, beautiful child.